What up? It's your boy T Brother the Reaction. Got a little TJ here on here. Say hi. Say hi, world. Hi. In case you're wondering, you might hear a little sound. Got watching Daniel Tiger to keep him a little occupied. Is a little cheers, well, too good up I got going on here. Um, but anyway, you see this the uh the sweats I sure got Rob's and Cody Rose finishing the story as well too. I I, I uh, revealed in one of my videos about about this wall too. Now, speaking of Cody Rose and perfect video to do this about hot takes, get your hot takes. And I'm gonna try my best not to cuss as much. I got the little man with me. We're at the same time. What do you want to talk about? Let's see. Yeah, I had to go there. So you know. And of course, the top, the big hot top, hot takes is Cody Rose, the worst WWE champion. And I wanted to do it. I was gonna do it on well, another video that was about Cody Rose, where it was called about how you overcome failing the AW and became WWE champion. I was going, I might do that later on. But I saw this perfect. So recently, there was a post. Uh, a post came out via. A by a Roman fan, um, if, if I can find it as well, too. To um, say it's from and it's not gonna be a Roman fans right here. So apparently, WWE falls falls below, fell below two million in rating again this week. Roman Reigns, the Rockets, stuff stuff the side of the Reigns went back to, to wait, they already were. Cody is not a draw, so. A lot of people is thinking folks are turning on Cody. So, it's not Cody fans. The fans are turning on Cody, but it's not the Cody fans. It's pretty much the fans who was never a Cody fan, never wanted him to finish his story, was on, was on Team Fuck Your Story and all that. Ooh, I cussed for a little bit. TF Your Story and all that as well, too. It's pretty much, and I said it in most of the posts talking about the situation along with that. It's pretty much for folks who were who did not want the, who did not want him to win it at first, not getting what they want about him losing or getting cashed on so they can bully the other fans over it as well too. Now they try to find any way to hijack this this high of his his him win a champion to get the win all and with uh what. Trying to push this I told you so thing they've been pushing it before he won the title, saying that if he won, he's gonna he's gonna go downhill like it did in the late 2010s. And I'm gonna say this one more time. He had his few first few yet. His literally his first few is about to get fine now this Friday between LA Knight and AJ Styles, which I highly think it's gonna be AJ Styles, and it's gonna be a good story between Cody and AJ Styles, as you know, both of them are Two, the only two currently on WWE that held both the NWA champion and both are WWE champions of World 2. So there you have it. Like, folks are not giving it a chance. And it's not the folks who are the Cody fans who are glad he finished the story. It's we're sitting here along with Cody awaiting his first opponent, his first few as, as champion as well, too. While we, while we enjoy the promos and the little dad jokes as well, too. And like, all the posts, all the stuff I saw that he's boring, all this, well, it's not from Cody fans. It's, it's the Cody haters trying to push this thing, push this narrative of him being like, because of what happened with Cody, with, with Kofi, what happened to damn, damn Brian, what happened with the, the, to Big E, they're pushing this thing, they're thinking it's going to fall down to this, and it's that, and I told you, and the main ring leader, Doing this is that Izzy Velasco guy I keep talking about on Jobber Steer. Yeah, I'm back on Jobber Steer and I'm calling his ass out. So anyway, but let's go to the hot text along with any other hot text as well too of Cody. Oh, oh and also I always saw as a, since he lost sight, I'm showing more props to him. Shout out to Justin Noah here, Roman Reigns get a title run. Not the title run. I don't want him in that. Get a movie role. On, when Keanu Reeves is a picture surface of him looking like a, a cover on a Big Daddy a Big Daddy Kane album cover as well too sitting with a little, sitting with a little suit and everything as well too it's oh it's for an upcoming movie for uh that's with Keanu Reeves so shout out to him getting his movie roles as he's been trying to do anyway but that time we still with Vince can't keep his 
his mouth off the tribal dick and one with the other face. Ooh, let me press again for one man. I hope you can hear me. Anyway, let's go on to this hot takes. Let's get it. Welcome back to another hot takes video. And the hot takes about Cody Rhodes and his WWE Championship run continue. Mm -hmm. This one comes from Twitter and it says Cody Rhodes might be the worst champion ever. Take it away, Polano. I said my piece. Take it away. And this to me is just blasphemy. How can you call Cody Rhodes the worst champion ever when this man has been champion for only a week or two? It's actually getting to a point where this is ridiculous. And this is a tweet that has like a thousand likes. So it's not just like two people. It's not 10 people or, or you know what I mean? Like Roman stands. This is a bunch of people who actually agree with the fact that Cody Rhodes might be the worst. It's not even, and if that Roman's fan, like I said, it's, it's people who hate, don't like Cody or never want them be champion or never want him to finish the story again same people like i said he's just only been champion for a few weeks give it a chance he's waiting for his opponents but they're not doing that it's like common go at this point and god forbid if the event will happen and he does i told you before i started out being a gun hole wrestling fan during during one of the this dub is one of the worst errors ever and that is the new generation era I I say I've been through worse, so I don't care if it if it happens and he does does don't be it do, doesn't be as great as people want to be. I I I'm gonna deal with it because I it's been a while since we had a big face champion in a long time, and I'm here for it regardless. All right, once he turns heel, then I I'll, I'll go along with the, with the boo and just go along with kayfabe as hell. Hopefully he doesn't. And those, those folks who wanted to happen, hopefully that's not the case. I mean, if he has, and there's even though one person saying that he might be a transitional champion, I like I said, I don't want that happening. I don't think he should be should lose it to AJ so soon or anything. At least down the line, some say he may lose it, then win it back. Like I said, multiple championships are great for baby faces, while the long title reigns for the hills. So anyway, let's keep going champion ever when this man barely held the title we've had many worse champions in the past just take a look ha! at someone like jack swagger like you cannot be serious when you say cody rhodes might be the worst champion you've just got to chill out and relax because at this point it is getting crazy it's getting ridiculous and i'm not a fan of these takes whatsoever like i said they're so scared of it falling into the 20 late 2010s as well too all right if you have a problem and you feel like that Go to AW. You got nothing against AW. Go to AW. Go somewhere else because we don't need you. All right? We don't need you. All right? Same as y'all thought. Y'all said we don't need us if, to the fans that said they go and stop w, watch WWE because it would hold Roman Reigns, hold the title, or not care about it. Now, it's only y'all. And then, like, y'all been telling us to cry more. Y'all can go cry now. How about that? However, I don't agree with this hot take at all. Let's keep going. The next hot take says that Gunther losing the IC title now leaves him directionless. No, give him time. Uh, they know somebody pointed out under the day, uh, Raw has been a little bit sloppy because, you know, a lot of folks hasn't been doing as much yet. I said, it, I think they're they're going along with it until the draft happens, and then so they're going to really cook as well, too. All right, they got some cooking right now with the Chad Gable Hill turn, and possibly going to be a new. Uh, Team Angle with uh, Chad Gable and the Creed Brothers. So I got to get ready to stop, stop sharing for the Creed Brothers soon. And, but I do feel like Drew should, I know Drew is a heel, but he should be, in, he should be handling Judgment Day, day uh, after what happens well too. And Guthrie should be doing something as well too. But I get it. They're trying to, I, I want to think about it. I'm okay with it because they're getting up folks. We haven't got TV time, some good TV time as well too. And this is perfect. Like a lot of stories ending and some are, or I still had got chance they haven't got a chance to end or ending right now in this era. So again, be patient. You know what I mean, y'all folks, we want instant gratification, but at the same time, we'll turn around and complain about this said instant gratification, regardless of what it is. Anyway, let's keep going. And I don't agree with this hot take. Like, yes, for now, it may seem hey. like that, but he had to lose the IC title eventually. So I don't have a problem with him losing it to Sami Zayn, especially mm -hmm. after us getting Perk Gable. That was a great segment. The man oh, suplexed yeah. Sami Zayn out exactly. of his wife's arms. Like, that was fire. Anyways, hey, I got to point this out as well, too. Listen, we're definitely, and I'm going to say this, we're definitely in the bizarre world of wrestling fandom era right now. Because, folks... Or more excited by a heel turn on their face, or like a lot of folks was more excited by Gable turning heel than Sammy retain the title, and that's ridiculous. 
in my opinion. Like the whole J- Jabba Tier group was like the majority was happy for Sami Zayn's heel turn more. Not Sami Zayn. Get Chad Gable's heel turn more than Sami Zayn win. I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, what the heck? Like, like, like it's getting ridiculous with this villain over hero situation, especially in the wrestling fandom. Like I said, wrestling fandom is uh, definitely one of the top. Toxic fandom top three of that though, because I say that because where they love villains over hero and they don't like kids. I mean, I love kids, especially my little one right here, and I love good guys and heroes. So I'm definitely not following this damn trailer. I don't care how long, I don't care how much. If it's entertaining, it is. I still won't follow it. That he has to find a new direction, and that is the task of the WWE creative team. He might even go after the WWE Championship, or you could just book him in big time feuds with maybe people like Brock Lesnar. I know mm. that is something that the WWE would probably want to book. I feel like he can also go in the, the World Health Championship run because there's a chance that Damian Priest may turn a face soon, especially since Brock Lesnar is looking like he's coming back to WWE. Speaking of Gunther and what his next direction will be, Cooper Taker says Gunther will dethrone. Co- I will say if it must happen not yet, at least till the next WrestleMania, and he has he's Wednesday Royal Rumble. Hopefully, Cody hold the title, at least have his second run till then as well too, because he have to drop it and and, and it'll be a chance to be relevant again, because you know folks be want folks want him to lose it because they feel like he's gonna be a bad champion. Other than that, uh. I say it must happen. If it must happen, happen to the next WrestleMania. He wins the Royal Rumble, and it'd be a good little storyline, long term story term, long term storyline happen right here. So yes. Cody Rhodes, and while I love Gunther and his character and his wrestling, I actually think that Gunther is one of the best wrestlers in the WWE right now. The man made the IC title feel so special. I honestly believe that he took the IC title and made it feel as special as the WWE and the World Heavyweight Championship. With that being said, I do not think he's going to be the one who dethrones Cody. I think that will be The Rock. I'm sticking to that theory. Okay, I think the Rock a lot of people still thinking that. I still like that. I feel that it's going to be a back and forth where he does does lose to the rock but rock gets it but he gets it back from rock what's going on okay let's keep going down the line but i would not be mad if gunther is the one to get the job done another possibility is this hot take saying a heel la knight should be the guy to no no he's too over right now to turn heel so soon and a lot of people are thinking that thinking that if he does if LA Knight goes be the one that wins on oh, Friday night, he'll go heel. It's too certain to turn LA Knight heel, so no. The dethrone Cody for the WWE title, and this is also another idea I would not mind at all. I think LA Knight is a great performer. I think at least not now. Make for an even better champion, and I think that a heel LA Knight, as much as I don't want to see him be a heel because he's so over, if that's what the WWE has to do in order to make this guy champion. I don't have a problem with it. I think LA Knight personally should win the money in the bank, especially after not winning it last year. I think this is his year. 2024 is when he wins that briefcase and then becomes a champion down the line. Jake's hot take says that Cena should turn heel and feud. A lot of people been wanting that too. I think he going agree because he's been wanting that Cena heel turn as well too. I mean, of course, I don't agree with it because I don't want, I don't want, I'm not ready to boo Cena, but at the same time, I I got a feeling it's going to happen just because. Cody Rhodes, I absolutely agree. I, I figured, love this hot take. I, I figured he agreed because he'd be on a, a heel scene in the in his career. The, the, seen the his career as a heel. I don't, but that's Polano. A heel turn against Cody Rhodes makes so much sense, especially with Cody basically taking John Cena's spot. Cena could be jealous. He could come back and say Cody. And, he, and if it, I mean, I don't want it, but at the same time, it could put Cody Rhodes as a better, as a bigger baby face as well too. So there's that. Cody Rhodes, you don't deserve this spot. Or Cena could even come back as a heel in order to push Cody Rhodes to be the best version of himself. That's, that's a pretty that's good idea. That's the only reason I'd be okay with it is just to push Cody to be his better baby face as well too. So folks, can Stop with this nonsense. That's the only way I'd be slightly okay with it. I'm still gonna boo him, but at the same time, I'm gonna be slightly okay with it as well, too. I think so. I would agree that Johnson should turn heel and feud with Cody Rhodes. Valor Club for Life says that Damian Priest winning the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania was the right decision as it brought back some of the prestige and the money in the big contract, and he's gonna hold that title for a while as I will say. Despite him being the hill, you know, he's by turn face. I agree on one part parts of it, but as for the last part, I'm not sure he's gonna hold it for a while. I feel like he's gonna be possibly a transitional champion, not not 
right away, but sooner or later down the line, Classic Castle. I feel like he's gonna either either that Castle Classic Castle or a little bit before Classic Castle, and he drops to the Drew and Drew have a have a match at Classic Castle to hold the title. Or no, it's better than him win at at Classic Castle. So who knows? As well, and for most of this hot take, I would agree. I think that winning the yeah. World WWE Championship at WrestleMania most was definitely the right yes. decision. At first, I did not think it was a good idea because it was Damian. And also, reason I'm glad because he did, he didn't cash on uh, Cody Priest, and I wasn't really buying the entire idea of him being the champion. But the way they booked it was so brilliant. Was. I thought it was the best way to do it, it especially was. with CM Punk screwing it Drew McIntyre. With that being said, it did indeed bring back prestige. To the money in the big contract for the last couple years the contract has not been booked well but this was perfect and making it feel so important and special the only thing i disagree about this hot take is that i don't think he's going to hold it for nah, a while i, I want to see Drew so. mcintyre win that belt back and then eventually feud with cm punk who i think I should figured. be the next person to win it after Drew McIntyre. Figured, yep. the next hot take says that undertaker's interference at wrestlemania was better than if stone cold interfered both and at first, I want as much as I want to still call Alt Steve Austin. I agree with this take because Undertaker always been the known final balls, and when Rock claims that as the final balls, it makes more sense now. And the more that I look into it, both by moment and by logic, I think by moment it was great, but I do think Stone Cold would have been a little bit better. I think it would have been a little bit louder, but by logic, I do think that Undertaker interfering made a lot of sense, made more sense than Stone Cold. Because yes, Stone Cold does indeed have beef with The Rock, but The Undertaker has beef with the entire bloodline. This man's been feuding with them for so mm -hmm. many years, so it makes sense. I liked it. At the end of the day, I thought it was great. And for this hot take, you can make an argument. I can see exactly what you mean, so it's not that bad of a hot take. I kind of think it's a good one. Donut says, I uh, really... Really said between The Rock, Cody, and Raw at the WrestleMania. While it was, well, it was confusing, I... Why it was confusing, it was interesting. Enjoyed the segment between The Rock and Cody on the Raw after WrestleMania. I don't get why so many people hated it. I feel like the only problem with that moment, with that segment, was the fact that it went on for so long it when that's it could have been cut short. You did not need. And to I feel like that's more so Rock's fault on that because he's been. A little, I'm not gonna lie, I got a love for The Rock regardless of him being a face right hill, but his his promo has been kind of long winded as of lately, as well too. Don't you agree, little man? He like no, he don't. But still, he's been his problem been low key kind of long winded in the way. Like he's takes him a while to get to the point. The Rock and Cody Rhodes out there for. I think a lot of folks are high on him having been the most best promo wrestler of WWE, but at the same time. He's showing age with his promo. Like, it's, he's like taking a while to get to the point. 35 minutes doing absolutely nothing. You could have made that a 15 minute segment. Exactly. But with that being said, I still think it's a pretty good segment because it got a lot of people talking about what The Rock handed Cody right. Rhodes, it which did. in fact is something I'm working on right now. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Kane says that the WWE is boring without the final boss. While The Rock did a great job at making wrestling cool again, and while The Rock did a great job in his entire gimmick and storyline and the feud with Cody Rhodes, I don't think it's been boring. The last it hasn't, but I get I get why folks say that because you know Rock did wrestling, made wrestling cool again for a lot of folks. It brought back folks who haven't watched WWE in a good while to watch it, like Tyron Mass. Speaking of that, I got a video about that as well too going for after this. Well, two going. shows, especially the last Raw and the SmackDown before that, have been so much fun. So I disagree. I think the WWE is doing super well, even it without is. The Rock and the final boss. And we just got to give it even more time as Cody Rhodes goes into an actual storyline for the mm -hmm. WWE Championship. Andy says this new era could rival the Attitude Era in terms of storytelling. And for the longest time, I disagree with this hot take. A lot of people... Have I... I, I, I he probably say he probably gonna turn change his tune, but I kind of agree that it will get it will be a good. It won't beat the add to era, but it will get be a good rival to the add to era, just like the ruthless aggression. It definitely will be up there as a group, though a rival between that and the group, and the ruthless aggression, like a triple threat to be honest. So yeah. I've been saying this for like a year now, but I'm starting to see the vision. Yes. I'm starting to agree, and I think this is true. And someone actually commented to him, the greatest baby face said, the Attitude Era never had true story. First off, shout out to that, that handle. I love it. But let's see. Attitude Era never had any true story. It was late night, crash TV. And that is facts. Well, not saying it's bad TV overall, but it's facts. That is facts to like... 
if you look back, at, it's like the Attitude Era was was great for the time because the nineties, especially the mid to late nineties, was all about edginess and grit. And that's what it did. Like, if you saw Pell Heyman's uh, uh, Hall of Fame speech or whatever, he said that he was, that wrestling was stuck in the night, stuck in the 80s. So, he gave that push with ECW to bring, to make wrestling a naughty thing. And then, WWE and WWF at the time, and WWE did follow through as well, too. So, yeah. Um... Why that was cool, but at the same time, it didn't really have no true, true, true storytelling. It's just a lot of shock value stuff happening with, with a credible stars as well, too. Where that's why Rufus Aggression kind of beat that two eras as well, too. And same with this new era as well, too. Telling it was late 90s Crash TV, Jerry Springer, Lowbrow Entertainment. It was bad TV overall. Which well, I would say no bad. one ever talks about it, just the stars in it. And while the greatest babyface is kind of harsh with it, I do think that some of the things that they say makes a lot of sense. And I kind of agree with the aspect exactly. of this hot take. Like these stars, especially, I think that the storytelling and the attitude era was not that great. It but was. The stars were so great that you it, it, it kind of didn't matter. Like but I think now it did oh, got it, like a lot of a lot of stuff in there too. It was mass about the max with the edginess and the star, but at the same time, there was there were some good storytelling, but not. As great as you had with the Rufus Aggression era and this current era right now, as well as the previous era as well too, but of as well too. Nowadays we got stars and we got storytelling, which is why I think this new Triple H era, this new Renaissance era, is going to be even better man. than the Attitude era. This hot take is actually crazy. It says CM Punk is faking an Shut up. That's injury? No, he's not. Why, why? I want to say that I want to say something else, but I can't say around him. But shut up. Why? Why would CM Punk be faking an injury? That he don't think he would main event WrestleMania if he had the chance to do so. This is crazy. Let's move on to the next one, which is actually about CM Punk, and it says CM Punk getting injured was a blessing. Somewhat. Only reason I say somewhat, cause we didn't got the Cody match as well too. We didn't got the whole drama with the Cody Rock and, and Roman situation, and he's done. He done some crazy shit, crazy stuff. Why not wrestling as well too, including when he did this Drew, this Drew Bag tire. So it's low key became busted. I still kind of wish he was wrestling because I want to see like he's a no. I get tired of folks with the brittle joke about him because he stayed injured. But at the same time, it was a little bit blessed to happen because a lot of stuff changed. So yes, seen in disguise, and I don't think this is the case. Like I guess you can now see it as a silver lining. Exactly. That CM Punk has a big time feud with Drew McIntyre, but we were stripped away from that CM Punk mm -hmm. and Seth Rollins feud, which true. I think would have been equally as true. great as what CM Punk is that doing is with true. Drew McIntyre. With that being said, CM Punk being injured, it is what it is. He's gonna come back stronger than ever, and I think he's got a lot of material for when he does come back, and I can't wait. The next hot take says that Randy Orton should introduce a new persona named the Rookie Killer. I've been saying this for years now. I want to see it. Right now, he's a baby mm. face, so I don't think it's a good idea to do it right now. Mm. But whenever he turns heel, this is what he's got. That's going to be a good look. I, I'm here Before anything over there, I'm not not agreeing with a heel. I'm not going to cheer for it, but that's going to be interesting as well, too. You know, because, you know... A lot of good NXT call-ups coming up. Some good ones like Braun Breaker, possibly Carmella Hayes and Ilya at the spring break. At the spring break uh, situation, I think Trick will Tr 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 take the title for Ilya. Um, many others well too. So yeah, I can see, I can see it happening. How to do? Maybe he does it with Cody Rhodes. You know, Cody Rhodes right now is a rookie when it comes to being Technically. a champion, and Randy Orton could be the one to try. And I feel like yeah, it can lead up, to, and that's good. It can lead up to Cody going back to Cody. Who's not really a rookie, but a rookie champion. So, yeah, I get it. To kill that rain. The next hot take says that Logan Paul is what WWE wanted Austin Theory. Funny thing, I saw this too. And low-key, I kind of agree. But I saw this take. I actually saw a take close to that in a way. To be, I don't I don't know how I feel about this because I don't think this is the case at all. I was Austin Theory. Say, I, I, okay, I'll tell you that. It's not the case, but he's doing way He's doing low-key better than, than Austin Theory in a way. Um, he's booked better. I mean, I know they they're glazing him on the uh, W2K with the Raiders, but at the same time, I get it. But yeah, uh, but the funny thing, I see a take, I see the take like that before. It's kind of similar to that.
Theory was never going to be what Logan Paul is, and Logan Paul is completely different from Austin Theory. Logan Paul is a celebrity person, and they give so much time to where they put mm -hmm. him on a spotlight and give him so many months to train for just one match. I will say he he's doing good with that spot, though. I will say that. And for the fact that I say that, that could be a good little storyline to lead to a feud between um Theory and uh Logan Paul because I can see I, was, I thought it was gonna be a third a, 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 a feud between Grayson Waller and Theory Theory which might still happen you know they want tag team champion you know so I see kind of break up and they can have that soon you no know, matter what and then, and it could also lead to a feud between Logan since right now they're the, they're like the Holy Trinity a Holy Trinity like Hill faction going on the way Hill Alliance going on the way with them being tag champion him still be the USA title champion yeah I can see that. Austin Theory is not like that at all. I disagree with this hot take, but I do think when Austin Theory turns babyface, I think he's going to have a great run. And just because of that as well, that just means that they're not alike at all either. Logan Paul is a heel who thrives as being the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Austin Theory is somebody who I think needs to turn babyface yeah. as soon as possible. JJ says that EO versus Bailey was better than Rio versus Becky, and I also agree with this hot take. Okay. I think EO and Bailey did a much better job. I'm not thinking about it. it's 50-50, but job, but you also got to consider the fact that Rhea had a panic attack before mm -hmm. WrestleMania going out there. And Becky also had a fever and strep throat. Yep. They just weren't doing too well going into that match. But with what they did, it was still fun, you know. But still, EO and Bailey did better. Party Ben says that Seth Rollins is a modern day Chris Jericho, the different characters, the in ring talent, and their consistency. I guess this is a pretty good comparison, good. but I still good feel comparison. like, like, I don't think it's just Jericho. I think it's a hybrid of Chris Jericho and also Shawn Michaels. And honestly, it's even, I don't know, Seth Rollins is just such an anomaly of a person. I think he is the only Seth Rollins, and I don't really think it's that great to compare him to others because Seth Rollins feels so different from everybody. I guess there's some similarities with Chris Jericho and Shawn Michaels, but it's not. Not much of a comparison. Dill says that Will Ospreay made the wrong choice. I don't think he did at all. I think AEW is perfect for Will Ospreay, especially his wrestling ability. I think it exactly. fits really well with that company. On top of that, he can only really work once a week, and I think the WWE yeah. schedule would not work. And is the thing, I get, I don't downplay anybody who said it can't work the WWE schedule. I mean, I know it's like the tribalist thing to do, because that's really a tribalist thing to do that. But the same, like, but you really think about that. Depends on, cause I saw I, I saw a real clip about how the uh, Santana Ortiz was was offered to do WWE, but they couldn't do it cause of the schedule. So and a lot of people was like downplaying him over there in the comments. And, I mean, why it would be nice to see them, and I mean the money is nice, but sometimes family come first no matter what. So as well as you know, you guys and you guys see if you want to be as the work that schedule too. So yeah, so. I, can, I I say that Will's this the right thing by going to AEW. Same with Okada as well, too. With Will Ospreay, especially with whatever... Situation. Plus, like I said, with anything, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket as well, too. So, you know, you got to have some kind of competition as well, too. So, yeah. ...situation he's got going on with his family. So, I do not think this was a bad call at all. I think Will made the perfect decision. And if Triple H was actually talking smack about Will, that means he made an even better decision because why would you join a company where the boss literally would be able to take a shot at you like that? I don't would not want to work for Triple H if I was Ooh, Will. True. I think I would want to work for Tony Khan. Party Ben comes back and says, Triple H realizes that cage matches are useless. I'm not sure what Ben really means by this, but I will say that cage matches are useless because I feel like they aren't being utilized properly. I don't think you should be able to win a steel cage match by leaving. I think the entire point of a steel cage match is to have two people wrestle with no interference, with no BS, and I think the WWE has to move back to that way of booking the yes. steel cage matches. And the last hot take says that this new era cannot succeed without the firing of... This might be the best hot take ever. Death Rebel has been the death of WWE theme. You heard who? You heard recently who? I forgot who recently got uh uh. Oh yeah, the Creed Brothers and Braun Breaker. Yeah, Death Rebel gotta go. I if we don't if we don't if we don't get Jim Johnson at least. Find some way in in a way to work out whatever legal action you got with C CFOs to come back. Cause Death Rebel is truly ain't it. They got some good they got a few hits, but most majority of them their things has been missed. So yeah, man. We we something gotta give. We'll get somebody that's up on CFOs or Jim Johnson's level, cause they ain't it, yo. For real. They're not.
Def Rebel, and I completely agree. That is the one thing I absolutely yeah, no, another one, Carlito. WWE, they make the worst theme songs, and I think theme songs are a big part. A of lot of people is calling them. They say their theme songs are pretty much call wrestler or generic wrestler number one, two tens is all it is, really. There, and it's, it's kind of true. I mean, there's something that's catchy, but at the same time, it's not. Majority of them is not great. They need to. They need to. Change, they need to do a change with the music, please. They bring. I mean, it might be if it's not Jim Johnson, find some legal way to get CFO, or let's do or go back to where Russell can pick their own songs, man, or something, man, because this because they they're not it. They're not it. Of the WWE and wrestling all together, there's some iconic themes like The Undertaker, Triple H, John Cena, all those guys in the past who have themes. Once you hear it hit, you're like, boom, this is about to be an epic fight. And when it comes to Def Rebel, they just suck. Everything sucks. So please fire their asses and get somebody new. Anyways, that yeah. is it for the video, guys. Thank you so much. For Anyway, this was a good high tech as well too. Of course, like I said, of course, I want to be is Cody Re Cody Rose being a world champion, and that is totally not true. You're not letting it cook. He has a lot of good uh, chances of some good, of some good, uh, uh, some good fuse storyline fuse to happen going forward as well too. So definitely give it give it time. All right. Other than that, though, it's probably first I hear the little man as well too because one he's want to get out. I'm gonna get him out in a minute. And I think his mom here, so I can take him over here to his mom. But other than that, if you like my reaction, like my little man's present as well, too. And uh, if you heard a little bit of the damn talk, I'm sorry. This is the best way to do keep me occupied and still and not ready to run over places. Like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Say bad, 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 everybody. It's your boy T-Bird signing off. One love.